All right, Freedom Protectors, so another impromptu video. I'm working on some Glock 26 lower parts kits with uh, Gen 5 ejectors. So everybody seems to love to watch me in my daily work <laughs> as I'm armoring and put, putting together different uh, upper and lower parts kits. So uh, I'll go over some education as I'm going through putting the kits together. But basically today I'm working on all Glock 26 stuff, right? So this one again is a, with a Gen 5 ejector kit but i you know i got gen 4s regulars all that other stuff my glock 26 stuff i just can't keep in stock both on the ebay store and the dot com they just fly off the shelf so uh putting together quite a few kits today so let me go through this so the first thing is is that i start with a gen 3 trigger housing okay and then i get the gen 5 47021 ejector and then we go ahead and we put this into the housing now, when we put this into the house, you're only going to be able to push it so far, right? Uh, you need to make sure when you do this upgrade that you are seating your ejector all the way back to the housing, okay? So that it's sitting flush there. Now, I have a press because I do hundreds and hundreds of these, right? So I have a little metal press where we press it into place over here. Uh, and then it sits nice and flush, right? It saves my fingers a little bit. And then once you have it seated all the way back, you are good to go. That is actually how we do the upgrade, okay? Next, I'm gonna take the connector. I'm gonna flip the housing upside down and I'm going to place the connector into the housing and push all the way down, all right? You wanna make sure that that's sitting nice and flat. You can even take like a pen with no, you know, no, no ink stick in it and push it down and make sure that it's seated all the way nice and flat. Next, I'm gonna take a OEM trigger spring, gonna face it down, and we're gonna go right in here into the housing, into the hole, just like that. Now, I know I make some of this stuff look easy, but you have to understand that I literally thousands and thousands and thousands of these, right? So just over time, you work the techniques that I have taught, uh, you'll be good too. For the uh, actual spring to the trigger, we face the trigger housing back up, the spring is facing up. I come in from the side and then I rotate into uh, the notch right here for the spring to sit. So just come in from the side, rotate in, and then down, and it's in. Now when I bring it over, I don't stretch it and do all that other stuff, okay? You wanna pinch down here very low and then just bring it over, right? So we don't stretch that spring. And then out and in, making sure that your spring down there is seated appropriately. And that's how you put together a trigger group, okay? So the trigger group is four pieces, right? It's the trigger, it's the connector, it's the housing, and it's the spring. So let's go ahead and make a kit now. Um, I'm gonna actually, let's do four. All right, so we'll push these aside. We'll put that aside. So we'll do, we'll do four Glock 26 with Gen 5 ejector upgrade kits here. So we've got four pieces here. Uh, slide lock, right, with the 301 on it. And you know that the fabricators and duplicators are now uh, stamping 301 to try to trick you, okay? So first and foremost, if it's not dirty and it's shiny, it's not a Glock part, <laughs> right? We know that that these come absolutely disgusting from the factory, right? We know it's got to have some grit and grime on it. Most of the time, it's it's got, you know, the undercoating you can see there as well. And then, you know, you want to follow along uh, my blog and make sure that you are staying abreast to all the little tricks that they're trying to come up with to fool you all right so we have four slide locks let's do a slide lock spring that's going to be the 26 is the smaller one okay if you're doing a build you're going to use the coil that it comes with that's the 26 spring we have uh mag buttons these are going to be stamped 287 again the cloners are stamping those but the font is wrong and it's very zoomed in uh and then i have some other things that i show you about the actual inside of the ejection mold all right but we need our mag buttons here for our kit just like that of course we need our mag catch springs as well and we need our slide stops, right? These are gonna be stamped 2912. Again, they're stamping them now, okay? So follow along, make sure you stay abreast, but 2912 right there. So one, two, three, four of those. And then we need trigger pins. So we need one, two, 
three, four trigger pins. And then our locking block pin. So your locking block pin is gonna have the distinct lock marking where it's held in place and then coated, right? If it comes to you and it's all coated and matte finished and there's no marking here from, from the Glock factory where it's held, you know that they have sold you a bogus or put into your kit a bogus locking block pin, okay? So one, two, three, and four, and then finally our trigger housing pin, two, three, four. So this is how the 12 pieces come together in a sort. Okay, so you have four in the trigger group, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, 11, 12 for your pins, right? Or you can go the opposite way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve. So those of you that love a first time quality, you know redundancy is key, right? So you do a count, you do a sort, and then you count them again, going in the bag. One, I mean four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and 12 and then of course these all get lined up and before they go out to the customer they are counted again so that's how we do a glock 26 oem lower parts kit sort and bagging